popular of all the saints. His name is found in every country of the world where there are Christians. Hello? Mr. Martin, please. Mr. Martin? Pronto, pronto. Il signor Martini. Oiga, señor Martínez. El señor Martínez. Ya. Yeah. Y es Pesa Martín. Hundreds of churches, large and small, have taken the name of St. Martin. His memory is everywhere in monuments, proverbs, the names of villages, stones and fountains. Here is the story of the life of St. Martin. He was born round about the year 316 in the country that today we call Hungary. Rome was then all-powerful. Martin's father, who was an officer in the Roman army, was a pagan. The name that he gave his child came from Mars, the god of war. Persecutions of Christians had stopped in the land. The symbol of the cross was spreading a little by little throughout the world. When Martin was 10 years old, his parents went to live in Milan. Often on the threshold of the church, the child heard the Christian hymns, and in his heart he had already heard the word of Christ. Being the son of a veteran soldier, Martin in due course was enrolled in the Roman forces and served in the garrison in Gaul. Already filled with the Christian ideal of charity and humility, he treated his slave as though he were a brother. gateway of the town of Amiens in the north of France, Martin saw coming towards him an old man half naked. Martin had no money, he'd already given away everything. Suddenly he thought that the great cloak which enveloped him was sufficient for two, and so he divided it and shared it with the poor man. following night, Jesus appeared to Martin while he was asleep. He was clothed in the part of the cloak which had been given to the poor man, and he said, It was Martin, still a catechumen, who covered me with this cloak. A little while afterwards, Martin asked for and received baptism. The Roman troops who guarded the Rhine were preparing for a war against the barbarians of the north. According to the custom on the eve of the battle, each officer received a gift of silver. This gift Martin refused and put his sword at the feet of Julian Caesar who commanded the army. Martin said, I will not fight for I am a soldier of Christ. Own that you are a coward, cried one of the soldiers. But Martin replied, I will come if you wish, without sword and with neither shield nor helmet, in front of the enemy army, only with the sign of the cross. Julian Caesar threw Martin into prison. Then on the following day, the barbarians asked for peace, without even having fought a battle. Many soldiers saw a sign in it. Had not Christ protected Martin? And they treated him with respect. As soon as he could, Martin left the army. He became as poor as the beggars he'd many times helped. Alongside Hilary, the saintly bishop of Poitiers, he accepted the humble task of exorcist. However, he felt he must return to his parents in order to convert them. His father rejected the crucified God 
and this religion which the Romans said was that of the slaves. But Martin's mother was touched by the new word he brought. For ten years, Martin retired from the world. He lived as a hermit on a desert island in the Mediterranean, alone with himself and with God. He was more than 40 years old when he went back to Hillary at Poitiers. Not far from the town, he founded the first monastery of the West. This was to be the signal for the great monastic awakening. Men whom he called his brothers came to share their life with him. Together they preached and healed the sick. Those who saw and heard Martin were able to say that in his mouth there was nothing but love, peace and mercy. To the savage men who came to hear him, he brought the word of Jesus. Love one another. Sure at last of his vocation, Martin accepted ordination as a priest. A little while after, God gave him power to raise a young man from the dead. A man called Rusticius came to seek Martin to ask him to accompany him to Tours so as to heal his sick wife. But this was only a pious device to get Martin to Tours so as to persuade him to accept the dignity of the bishopric of Tours. This he had refused once, just as he had already refused the bishopric of Poitiers on the death of Hilary. Gradually, as he approached the town, Martin saw coming towards him men and women getting more and more numerous, who surrounded him and acclaimed him as their pastor. The voice of the people is the voice of God. It was thus that Martin was consecrated Bishop of Tours. However, the new bishop did not feel at home in a beautiful dwelling and in the life of the world. He made his palace in grottoes hollowed out of the cliffs of the valley of the Loire. It was there that he received his priest and his flock. He lived in the greatest simplicity, saying, it is the church which feeds and clothes us. We must not accumulate more than is necessary for our personal needs. He founded there a new abbey which he called Marmoutier. Many young monks came there to study the scriptures, to learn, to meditate, and to make copies of the lives of the saints. Martin pursued everywhere error and heresy. In the pagan temples he broke the idols, indifferent to threats, responding to force, with prayer only. Without respite, he traveled throughout the country, taking the gospel. An old legend says that, mounted on a donkey, he flew from belfry to belfry. Wherever he passed, new churches served by young priests were raised up. Everywhere were created communities of the faithful. Thus, through the whole of Gaul, Martin erected at the top of the hills and on the plains the symbol of the cross. Only death was able to stop him proclaiming the gospel. He was more than 80 years old when he felt that his mission was nearly accomplished. He wanted to return to Tours and his bishop's cell. But he had to stop at a little village on the banks of the Loire. To his companions, would have kept him alive for a little longer if they could, he said. Let me look at the sky rather than the earth, so that I may set my soul on the road to God. These were his last words. A white church stands today at Caen, on the spot of earth where St. Martin died. His companions took his body to tour down the waters of the Loire. 
The legend assures us that although it was the 11th of November, yet all along the way on the banks of the river, trees and bushes blossomed.